G'day everyone and welcome to my very first video of a new series in which I check out and give you guys my impressions of this month's free PlayStation Plus titles. To be clear, those who have a current PlayStation Plus subscription will be able to pick up these games for free within March 2015. Well, in Australia anyways. And also, these will not be reviews or even mini reviews, but more like guidance of what games you should check out this month and what games you shouldn't bother even downloading. I may end up reviewing these games sometime down the line, but for now, it's just an initial impression. So without further delay, let's check out the first title on the list, Oli Oli 2. An addictive 2D skateboarding game with the aim to chain together combos for the highest score and complete challenges in a large variety of different levels. Straight to the point, Oli Oli 2 is a hard game. It is hard to pull off the simplest tricks because everything requires correct timing and perfect memorization of button combinations. Once you start off a simple Oli, you have to press a button right before you make contact with the ground to pull a perfect landing. And from here, the challenge just gets more and more difficult as the game goes on. Fortunately, at least this game does its best to teach you how to pull off all the moves you need to know with its vast tutorial. The game is challenging. Some people might find that a good thing, but more importantly, the gameplay is quick, fluid, and addictive. You will be constantly restarting the level over and over again to pull off perfect combos and to complete required challenges. This is the perfect game to challenge yourself with quick gameplay, huge challenge, and that feeling that if you stuff it up, you know it's your fault. I recommend that you give this game a go for a quick fix of fun and challenge, and it's even available on the PS Vita for gamers on the go. So next in the lineup is Counter Spy, a side-scrolling spy game in which you are a spy sent in to retrieve nuclear plans from the imperialists and the socialists, two sides fighting against each other in a fictional Cold War setting. You are part of Counter, an organization that isn't sided with anybody, but instead is focusing on disrupting both sides' nuclear launch plans by sending in a spy, which is you, to retrieve them. Counter Spy has style, with colorful animated graphics straight out of a Pixar movie, and is complemented by a cheesy old spy soundtrack straight out of a classic 60s spy film. The gameplay consists of addictive side-scrolling stealth shooter gameplay in which you have to infiltrate, collect intel and other goodies, discover secret rooms, take out all enemy patrols, and reach the final computer to finish the randomly generated level. The gameplay overall is really solid and I love the camera style when you're sneaking around and taking cover. The camera spins to a different view to give you a 3D perspective of the environment and to help you play out your next move. It is also the best view for cover-based gunplay. Patrols can even radio for help, which raises the DEFCON level, and you have to be careful because if it raises too high, then you only have a certain amount of time to reach the final computer before the missiles are launched. To me, the game is addictive and I loved searching the environments to discover every little secret, and I had lots of fun stealthily taking out patrols from a range or in close quarters combat. The game, however, suffers from little problems. The fixed camera angle, while stylishly used, is pretty rubbish in a combat situation, as it is really hard to see and aim at all enemies, and you can die very quickly in this game. So when you're trying to fight with the camera while taking out patrols, it can be pretty frustrating. Also, sometimes the enemy's pathfinding is pretty bad, as sometimes they'd end up running into walls, and even their ragdoll bodies can sometimes do some very strange things. But even though they do very very strange things, at least it's hilarious. Otherwise, I am really enjoying Counter Spy, and I am not a side-scrolling fan, but the gameplay is smooth and addictive and quick, and I really enjoyed stealthily taking out enemies and discovering every little secret in each level to earn myself new weapons and money. I recommend giving the game a go, it may suffer from a few technical issues, but overall the game is a really great amount of fun, and I am very happy to have this game in my library, and I will definitely be going back to it. So up next, Next, Abe's Odyssey New and Tasty, a side-scrolling platform puzzle game in which you play a Moodicon named Abe, who works at a meat processing plant rupture farms on Oddworld. One day while working, Abe discovers that Oddworld's meat resources are starting to run low, so Rupture Farms decide to start producing a new product using Moodicon meat. Upon discovering this, Abe decides to escape, and depending on you to save him and as many other Moodicon survivors as 
you can. So again from a side view you control Abe as he saves Mudikins, avoids enemy patrols, accidentally kills Mudikins and solves many sections and puzzles. So in this remake the game has been upgraded from 2D to 2.5D with beautifully upgraded visuals, added camera angles, more checkpoints and features to make the game more enjoyable than the previous version. I love the tone of the game depicting a depressing and dark world but oddly is filled with great humour which makes for an overall fascinating world. There is plenty of challenge in the game but the added difficulties let you choose how you want to enjoy this game. I enjoyed the normal challenge that requires plenty of thought and correct timing to conquer. Unfortunately though half of the challenge is fighting the stiff old school controls that feel very much like the original game. Moving Abe around can be a challenge in itself and makes timing and precision a problem especially for a platformer. I myself never finished the original game but this remake has really caught my interest and I really want to continue playing it for its old school puzzle solving gameplay and I just love the odd world's world. You have to check out this game if you've never played the original before and even if you have this remaster has enough added upgrades and features to please returning fans. I will definitely be returning to odd world and hopefully see it through to the end and who knows maybe I'll even review it. And finally the last PS4 game on the list is Valiant Hearts. A side scroller again, war puzzle game which is set during the time of the First World War in 1914, where you play as a handful of characters, each with different backgrounds and interesting stories to tell. I love the overall presentation of this game, set up as a kind of storybook with lovely drawn visuals which are used to great effect. The characters for the most part of the game don't really speak, so the game uses its visuals to tell the story, and that is more than enough to make you feel for these characters characters and get involved in their stories. I also have to give absolute praise to the soundtrack. It is beautiful, just beautiful. Piano music gets me every single time and I really get emotional just watching these characters go through hell while being complimented by this incredible soundtrack. Even the mumbles of the characters really click with me for some reason. Now I'm ashamed to say I know absolutely nothing about World War One. There was never a time where I wanted to know anything about it, but Valiant Hearts is filled with World War One facts and I couldn't help but read every single one of them and I am just fascinated about every little fact about what people really had to go through during the war. So far the majority of the gameplay require you to stay alive during epic battle sequences and solving rather simple puzzles. Sure the puzzles are fun and interesting but then again there's this other side of me wishing for more challenge, more brain teasers, then again maybe the game gets harder the longer you play it, but for now the game is pretty simple and very forgiving. Valiant Hearts tugged at my heartstrings. I was pleasantly surprised at how invested I got into this game and I would suggest anyone, even if you don't like war themes, to go and check out Valiant Hearts. With beautiful visuals, beautiful music and touching characters and stories, I just couldn't help but get invested and I will definitely be playing this to the very end and would really love to review this game in the near future. Moving on to the PlayStation 3, we start with Sherlock Holmes Crimes and Punishments, a crime-solving game which centers on the legendary fictional character Sherlock Holmes, along with his partner John Watson that work together to solve crimes others cannot. You play as Sherlock as you investigate a handful of various crimes throughout the game and you will also be able to take full advantage of a number of Sherlock's special investigation skills. I might myself may not be much of a Sherlock fan but I do love a good whodunit and this game delivers with solid investigation gameplay in which you have to explore the crime scenes, talk to people, observe the details and piece together the evidence. This has got to be one of the better crime solving games I've played but unfortunately technical hiccups spoiled most of the fun that I wanted to have with this game. Now I have read quite a bit about this game and that a lot of praise has gone into the visuals and from the pictures that I've seen I would agree but I don't think the PlayStation 3 version holds up as well against the PS4 or PC version. There are lots of frame rate drops, 
most blurry visuals and the game even crashed on me. It is just so disappointing and makes me want to get the PS4 version instead as I imagine it would be a lot better. Also, the game is very slow paced. You have to be thorough enough during your investigation, making sure you find everything within the crime scene, examine all the evidence, talk to all the witnesses, and to do all this you have to spend a lot of time walking around large areas. I really want to like this game and the investigation gameplay seems really great and fun and interesting to me, but the visual and frame rate issues just turn me off playing this game and I'm worried that it could crash on me again. If you love a really good whodunit game then check it out, just be aware of these fun breaking flaws. And now to the last game of the month. Papo and Yo, an adventure puzzle game that focuses on themes of a boy with an abusive father who, while hiding in his closet during one of his father's rages, he ends up discovering a fantasy world filled with unknown characters and environmental manipulating puzzles. Your name is Quico and you eventually stumble upon a giant docile like creature that goes simply by the name of Monster, who is used to solve puzzles early on in the game. But once the monster eats a frog, for some reason it goes into an unbearable rage and becomes aggressive towards you. Basically the monster is a fantasy version of your abusive father and every now and then you get a flashback of your father with a shadow of the monster. This game has some really interesting themes not really seen in video games before and it doesn't take them to an extreme level like you think. Gameplay consists of mostly platforming and simple puzzle solving using environmental manipulation which at least keeps the puzzles interesting. I did however come across some issues Issues, the platforming controls are for the most part pretty stiff and difficult to use. The visuals while at some points look nice can result in some frame rate drops and screen tearing. Also while solving puzzles you end up moving a lot of buildings around which results in a lot of noticeable clipping. And also at the very start of the game it's hard to find a motivation to keep you playing the game as it doesn't set up an interesting beginning sequence but instead you just seem to discover more the more you play. Despite these flaws though and have played through a bit more, I am interested enough to want to keep playing it to learn even more about Quico's story and what this fantasy land is. I recommend Papo and Yo, it's an original theme for a video game and the puzzles are interesting enough to keep you interested, just hope that you can get past all of the stiff controls and visual hiccups. So overall March is full of a lot of puzzle side scroller games with enough variety to have something for everyone. Personally I love the unique stories of Papo and Yo. Yo, Abe's Odyssey and Valiant Hearts, and the addictive gameplay of Counter Spy and Oli Oli 2. So I am very happy with these games this month and keen to hopefully review some of these games later down the track. Thank you for watching my very first video of a new series for PlayStation Plus Games of the Month, and I hope you enjoyed it and I hope you enjoy these games. MAT5 is bloody out of here.